item on our agenda is a public hearing <coughs> on uh, proposed zoning amendments. Um, notice of the public hearing was uh, published in the town common. Mm -hmm. on, uh, do you have the publication date? 13th. Thirteenth and then twentieth of February. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read the uh, most important parts of the notice. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter Forty Eight, the Raleigh Planning Board will hold a public hearing on a petition of the Raleigh Board of Selectmen uh, to consider amending the zoning district map of the town of Raleigh by number one, <coughs> transferring a portion of Lot Thirty Four on Raleigh Assessors. Uh, Raleigh Assessor's Map 14 from the Business Light Industry District to the Retail District and amending the bylaw by 2, revising uh, Section 8.6.5.1 by changing the Special Permit Granting Authority for Illuminated Signs from the Board of Selectmen to the Planning Board uh, 3, replacing text in Section 4.0 that refers to other sections of the bylaw by inserting the exact text of those other sections and renumbering accordingly by adding a grandfather clause for all existing accessory in-law apartments in section 6.6. .6. Number four, revising <coughs> section 5.4 by changing zoning administrator to building inspector, adding a limitation on the expansions that are approved uh, by the building inspector, at, and adding standards to guide the ZBA in the exercise of its discretion and small text changes. Number five, revising section 6.2 multifamily and 6.7 New England Village Development by changing the formula used to calculate the density allowed and 6 adding a definition for solar photovoltaic installation to section 2.0 and allowing such installations in the outlying district and the coastal conservation district uh, subject to site plan review by the planning board. Um, that's basically uh, uh, the meat of the notices. Anyone want to make a, mo make a motion to op open the public hearing? I make a motion that we open the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so basically, we're proposing to make uh, six basic changes to the zoning bylaw. Um, I think what I'd like to do is go through each one of those changes, try to summarize uh, concisely what it's about, and then ask if there's any uh, questions uh, or comments on the change. Um, okay, number one, uh, we're going to revise, uh, we're proposing to revise the zoning district map of the town of Rowley uh, by transferring a portion of lot 34 on the Rowley's ass uh, assessor's map uh, from our business light industry district to our retail district. Um, uh, this, uh, this is a small parcel of land we're talking about, it's less than an acre in size. Uh, it's located on the corner of Route 1 and Havel Street. It's basically the property behind the Agawam Diner. And what we're doing uh, is proposing to transfer that from the uh, Business Light Industry District to the Retail District. Um, the reason we're proposing this is currently uh, the, the zoning lot line for the Business Light Industry District and the Retail District uh, runs right through the property that we're talking about, basically uh, bisects the property. And it actually runs right through uh, the building that's currently located on that property. So this has create, created some difficulties in terms of uh, what uh, uses are allowed in the building um, because, you know, the building essentially is in both districts. Uh, it's created some problems for our building inspector. And so we'd like to change that uh, by basically transferring this whole parcel, again, it's less than an acre, uh, so, that it's, so that all of the parcel is included in the uh, retail district. We feel that this will eliminate those administrative problems that we've, we've experienced with respect to that uh, particular parcel of land. So that's basically that change. Does anyone uh, have any questions or comments? Board members or residents of the town? Okay. I'll totally move. familiar with it. I don't hear any, anything, I'll move on. Uh, we would also uh, amend the bylaw uh, by um, changing the permit granting authority for illuminated signs. Uh, currently the Board of Selectmen has the, uh, that particular authority to approve illuminated signs. 
at the Board of Selectmen's request, we would change that to the planning board so that if this article is passed, the planning board would be the board in town that you would have to go to to get a permit for an illuminated sign. Any questions or comments? Uh, number three, um, we would basically, this is more or less an editorial change, we would um, uh, revise the sections of the bylaw that list the particular uses that are allowed for particular zoning districts. Um, currently the bylaw, uh, in some of those sections, it, it identifies as the uses that are allowed by referring to previous sections where the uses are explicitly stated. So for example, um, the bylaw for the business light industry district may say that the uses uh, allowed in the retail district are allowed in the, the business light industry district um, rather than actually listing those uses uh, uh, describing like you know uh, you know assembly warehouse or, or something like that there's a sample if you want. right so basically um, what we do instead of uh, in for each zoning district instead of um, referring to the uses that are identified in other sections we would actually state what the uses are so this would make it simpler for people to read and understand the bylaw if they want to know what uses are allowed in the in any of the districts they would simply go to the section for that district and they can see in black and white a list of a list of the allowed uses so again that's pretty much an editorial change uh, we would also add a grandfather clause um, to our uh, accessory in-law apartment uh, bylaw. Um, that bylaw was recently um, changed uh, at the last town meeting, and one of the changes that it made was that it reduced the uh, maximum size of an accessory in-law apartment. Um, and after we made that change, we realized that there were some apartments that had previously been approved, had been approved under the old bylaw, um, that were now too big to be approved under the new one. And so basically we decided it was appropriate uh, to address that situation to add a grandfather clause in the bylaw that would allow um, accessory apartments uh, that were approved under the old version of the bylaw to continue to be approved under the new one uh, even though those apartments uh, were too large. At, at the square footage of those apartments uh, exceeded the maximum limit in the bylaw. Um, no, if any of this doesn't make sense, please let me know. Um, we would re revise uh, the section of our bylaw which deals with expansion of non-conforming uses um, in two ways. Um, and a non-conforming use basically refers to a, a single or um, two-family home uh, that's located on a lot that, that is non-conforming with uh, our zoning requirements. For example, if it doesn't have um, a sufficient frontage and uh, uh, lot size or something like that, it's considered a non-conforming uh, house or, or dwelling. And if, if someone wants to expand um, that, those kinds of dwellings, uh, in certain cases the expansion can be approved by someone, something less than the Board of Appeals, but in other cases it has to go to a Board of Appeals uh, for a public hearing before they can get a permit to expand the home. And what this bylaw does is, is identify uh, what, what types of expansions can be approved without going to the Board of, to the board of appeals, appeals for a public hearing. Now currently our bylaw says the zoning administrator would, would make the determination whether something has to go to the Board of Appeals for a public hearing. And one of the changes we want to make is to simply make that, uh, the, give that authority to the building inspector just for uh, administrative sim simplicity, really, you know, for no other reason. Um, it would also amend that particular bylaw to say that if a house is located, if, an, if a non-conforming dwelling, uh, if someone wanted to expand a non-conforming dwelling by more than 50 percent, uh, they would have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a public hearing. It doesn't mean that that expansion would necessarily be denied, it just means they need, would need the approval of the Board of Appeals. And we're making that change to make it consistent with a change in Massachusetts law on that particular issue. Any questions? No? I'll keep rolling. Uh, we'd also revise our multifamily bylaw to change the, um, the, the formula that's used to calculate uh, the maximum number of units 
that can be developed under our multifamily bylaw. And I'm not going to go into the details of that calculation, but it would, it would basically change the calculation so that um, for lots, uh, two acres or less, uh, basically the number of units uh, that could be developed would stay the same. It, it, in other words, this bylaw would not affect the number of units that could be developed for lots of two acres or less, but it would decrease the number of units that could be developed for larger lots. Um, we would add a definition uh, to our bylaw for solar uh, volt photovoltaic installations, basically solar farms. Um, and uh, because our, currently our bylaw says nothing about uh, solar uh, energy or, or commercial solar installations. So we feel we have to do something to change that because these types of installations are um, starting, you're starting to see them more frequently and if possible we could get one in one. <coughs> So basically, we would amend the bylaw to add the definition for these solar installations, and we would provide that such installations are allowed in our outlying district and our coastal conservation district, uh, subject to site plan review by the planning board. Um, uh, clearly, we're not opposed to this type of use. We actually, I think most of us are in favor of it, uh, but we feel that um, these types of installations, they are commercial developments, and they should be uh, subject to s some kind of uh, site plan review by a town board and under this proposal the planning board would, would be the uh, board that would conduct such review. So I think I've addressed everything. Any questions or? No, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> questions from the audience? Well, either I did a good job or no one understands it. That's just one no, of the a combination, <laughs> combination of both. <laughs> So, okay, um, I guess, I, I think we can move to close the public area. Does anyone see a reason to keep it open? Did, did Bob want to say anything? Oh, Bob, sorry, did you want to say something? No, I just said uh, there was uh, these notices were sent to the Board of Selectmen, and I know each member received a copy, and there was right. no, uh, no problems with it all, so I think we're fine to go forward. Great. And the I should add this. This is a, a has been a cooperative effort um, between uh, the the planning board, the, the zoning board, the building inspector, the board of selectmen. We all have sat down and met with each other in uh, in the uh, or, or representatives of each of those boards and the building inspector. Did you say uh, board of appeals too? Yes, I did. Oh, zoning okay. board. I have uh, are members of this uh, zoning review committee that we that's been established in town, basically to go over the bylaw and make proposals for, for changes that are needed. And that's how uh, we got to this point. This is a product, really, of the uh, work of the Zoning Review Committee. Which, which is still ongoing. Right. Yes. So we're going to be looking at some other things, still. So, OK, well, I guess I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? You guys have it. Okay. Okay, um, did, did you want to make a recommendation? For what? To the selectmen? Um, oh, yes. Well, I, uh, yeah, I guess... Um, you could wait till the end. Yes. Yeah, I know we might as well do it now. I mean, I, I guess... Uh, this, I think the motion I'll ask for that we uh, need to vote on is whether um, the planning <coughs> board is going to recommend that uh, these articles be pursued and approved at town meeting. So that's that's the motion, I think. Or unless you, we, you wanted to work on any of them. We can still work on it. I mean, there's still works in progress. So um, if, the, if the members are satisfied with that, we can, we can vote on that now. Or if you want to see the final drafts, we can vote on that later. I think it's good because most of the material is here. It might be a word or two. Yeah, yeah. right. It's, it can always be edited and revised right up until town meeting, actually. And you can actually vote on the floor of town meeting to make changes. So. Okay. I don't have a problem okay. because I've been going to all these other meetings. Right. Okay. Well, someone want to make a motion to that? Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking. 
Um, I make a motion that we approve the changes to the zoning ordinance that were presented tonight and uh, go ahead and propose them at town meeting. And go ahead and propose them at town meeting. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll Aye. Propose the ayes out. Okay, Katrina, what is, um, th there's nothing here with a specific time? Nope. Uh, what? We just go one, uh, from one, one to the next. One to six? Okay. Um, Rally Village Green, Charles Construction. Is anyone here for that? Well, um, the abutters are. Oh, okay. Um, and, and also, I believe Larry has, has some reports also. Okay. Um, I think... Uh, what I gave you as attachments are several emails and reports, um, several from Larry, concerning a retaining wall at the entrance, changes, oh, okay. changes to the drainage system, trees in the no-cut, no-disturb zone, and the location of drainage and riprap in the easement located at the rear of the Rubo property okay. at 61 Main Street. And I believe Larry has um, an update for the board. Do you want to address sure. what the issues are, Larry? Yeah, uh, and, and just generally tell the board that uh, you know, the construction <coughs> has proceeded out there through the winter months. Is uh, uh, up until the last uh, few weeks, is uh, they've moved along with uh, some cooperative weather in uh, getting some of the road base in uh, up to where they could put in foundations for the first three buildings. First on the left, and two on the right. <coughs> uh, they've constructed fill across that low area as you go into the site over about half of the road to access the site, <coughs> put the water line in from Main Street uh, into about 200 feet, and constructed a drain which goes across at that low point into the wetland that drains a small area behind the Ruble property and a small area that, that comes down out of the uh, no disturb zone that, that was protected. Uh, uh, a number of things have uh, come up that has taken quite a bit of uh, the new engineers time uh, and my time as well uh, and the reason for that I think it can be explained is that the the design engineer is is no longer on the job if he's in business uh, so the engineer for the developer is now Nevi Moore group um, and we have together had to work through some of the issues that have come up that I would say to, to try to be sure that the design intent was accomplished as well as putting the practical construction spin on it to, to get the job done. And uh, Katrina hit on a few of those. Uh, one is the retaining wall on the left as you go into the property. Um, I made a recommendation to the board of uh, bringing that wall up a height of two block high or 16 inch block and actually it'll be about two and a half block high uh, to construct a curb on that side of the street that was not on the original design plans and between the curb and the wall to construct a uh, timber uh, guardrail. Uh, put that guardrail post right up to the face of the block wall. Uh, the block wall itself is not uh, structurally um, uh, designed nor constructed to act as a retaining or as a uh, guardrail for vehicles and at one point we have about a 12 foot drop off there so my recommendation then was to have the block wall have the wood guardrail put a curb there to hold that gravel shoulder we're going to increase the width of the gravel shoulder a little bit to accomplish this uh, and the developer as well as the design engineer has um, agreed to do so and I just got some information on that today which I have not reviewed but it looked like it was in concert with my recommendation so I would like the board I guess to uh, acquiesce if you would to to that uh, that's that's one thing uh, before you go on can I ask yeah. you about the um, so the 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 guardrail is going to be seven feet high no no um, there were two letters from me. The first, the first spoke about bringing the the, the uh, block wall up as high as seven seven feet. Uh, after looking at that, uh, I decided that was a bit of overkill. There should be a follow up letter in oh, there okay. uh, yes. that, that Seems superseded like that. Um, so it'll be roughly two and a half block high, which is about three feet now. 
and it'll have the handrail on top of that. Which is these, are, these are the plans you just sent today. I think okay. the, these show the revisions, right? Incorporating yeah, well that, your they recommendations. You probably won't understand that that one too well, but this section right here is a good representation of what that's going to look like. Okay. Um, so that that's that's one item. If we want to move on from that. So just if you're on the roadway, um, the, the wall will raise above. Uh, above the edge from, of the pavement. From, from that side of the wall, there'll be what, about two feet of... of about two of and a half from the roadway side. Right. About two and a half feet of block, and then you'll have a, a handrail okay. on top of that. And what if you're on and the... And you'll have the guardrail in front of it. So, and I don't know, that doesn't depict no, the that guardrail. Show that. Yeah. So, I, I, I haven't seen this yet. Oh, okay. But that's... That's your... Um, proposal that the guide will be in front of them? Correct. Right. Correct. So from the other side, how, I'm just curious. The other side, all you'll see is the, the block itself. It's a double face block and the top, top rows are exposed on both sides. You will see the fractured face block. And how high is that? But in some points up to 12 feet. Really? So it, it goes from that, that point and gradually slopes up to nothing on both ends. It's about 200 feet long. Mm -hmm. Um, another item which has come up is the. Um, Can I see about sure. is your name? The Rubles. Yes. Right. Um, if you have any comments or questions as we go through these, if you want to ask Larry or ask Larry, questions or comment, um, will there be drainage for the water to go out um, where you're proposing this new? Well, there, there won't be there won't be any drainage trapped in the road if that's what you're asking. There is there's catch basins in the road at that low point that carry that water back to the... Um, is that towards our property or away? No, no, it's, it's back away from the property. Okay. And I, I think we're going to talk about other things yeah. with respect to drainage right. uh, for them. Uh, an, another item is in the no disturb zone, uh, which the board would wisely protected in, in the permitting process for the abutters over toward Merrifield, uh, right at the edge of that no disturb zone and right behind a couple of these buildings are two very large pine trees. Um, I have recommended to the board that they permit the developer to take those trees down. At the, They're actually in the no disturb zone, but they're just inside of it. What kind of pine trees? White they're, pines? They're big white bully pines. Terrible trees, yep. yeah. And uh, to, to, to remove those trees now while they can, when there's no, you know, buildings right up against them, uh, for the obvious pur purpose of, uh, you know, protecting life and, and uh, property. Uh, because uh, the wrong kind of wind, you know, they could easily come down. And they've been protected by the forest, which is no longer there. Mm -hmm. so which has been probably taken come down. down. Yeah, so they probably will. Uh, and in, in place of that, to place three uh, coniferous trees in that area or in other areas as we might see fit that will actually provide more of a uh, buffer to the to the Mary's Field side than these trees are because these trees are tall and all the all the buffer is up there it's not buffering what you see through the woods right so to put some shorter coniferous trees in their place I, I see as a win-win for everybody yeah well that makes sense did any of the under under planting go in in the fall yet or oh they all went in okay they all went in so and i think it looks pretty good as can you tell how they're doing yet or is it too too early Has, what? can you tell how they're doing yet or is it i haven't early? looked at them yeah. uh pretty much since they went in right. and and but we do have a provision in there for us to to assess them right and and to come back and yes. replant right. if necessary we'll know more in the spring um uh another um item which came up and trying to think what else it was besides the drainage uh, behind the abutters here? So, uh, oh, uh, well, it, it's a combination of both the landscaping and the drainage. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the landscaping first. Uh, th this plan, past, uh, I might have to share a couple of those and make a whole lot of copies. Uh, this plan shows on the first sheet in green. No, that's a. Uh, uh, shows in green uh, what the planting plan, which was approved, proposed, which is on the left side in green, uh, 
to the north, five white pines, and to the south, two blue spruce. Uh, white spruce, I'm sorry, and two blue spruce. Um, in, in yellow, uh, across the way there, there was some proposed uh, coniferous as well as a linden tree. Um, essentially, none of that works anymore in the specific location that is shown. If you look at the next sheet, I believe, in green, uh, the green swatches there that I made in, um, with a magic marker are where we could put those seven white and blue spruces and, and still accomplish essentially what we were setting out to do and that is to provide some screening between the roadway here and uh, the abutter at 61. Um, and in yellow, uh, on the opposite side of the street, where we could put those same four trees over there, the linden would basically stay where it's shown and to put the three coniferous trees behind where we inserted three um, overflow parking spaces. So uh, I, I'd like the board actually to, to grant me permission to work that out in the field when these, you know, these improvements are made. So what's necessitating the changes? Is the, the the well, overflow parking? No. Uh, well, that is on the, on the yellow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's necessitating that change. On right. the, on the green it. side, if you look at the, that second sheet, you'll see just to the left of where it says PDMH2 and PD4. That is a, um, a, a drainage way, if you will, that collects water from up in the, uh, behind these, these dwelling units, not from the roadside, but behind them and directs it into what's been already constructed, a riprap uh, small basin with a pipe that goes across the road and into the wetland. Um, this is a picture of what it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, so so the first plan pr actually proposed the plantings right where that is, so okay. obviously they can't go there. Uh, so that's why I need to move them to the east, straddle that pipe that's, that's labeled on here, PD-1, uh, and uh, that, that, that's the reason for wanting to make that okay. change. Uh, lastly, and in that same area, and dealing with the same uh, situation, I think that the butters might want to uh, reflect on this evening, is that drainage swale itself. Uh, that swale, as I can uh, uh, best discern, has been constructed where the plan called for it to be, the pipe is constructed where it's supposed to be. Um, most of that riprap swale that uh, Katrina just showed you uh, is on the, the development side of the property line. A small a degree of it is within an easement on the abutter's property. And uh, uh, the question has been asked by them if that riprap could be moved off of their property and more putting this swale more are all on to the development side of the property line. Uh, my answer to that has been uh, yes it can be done um, if the developer wants to do it uh, and I say that because I think he's built the plan according to the approved plan uh, but if he chooses to do that at the request of the abutter my only issue with it, if, if we don't move the pipe, and he's probably not going to move the pipe because that's in there and well covered and there's a water line going under it and lots of uh, issues to move that pipe. It, what it's going to do is to move that one-to-one uh, -one riprap slope that's on the abutter's property over and to get it off the property and to retain the uh, volume of that little basin that we need. We're going to essentially have to til tilt it up and build a wall. and it's going to be a, a shallow wall, it might only be two or three feet high. Uh, I'm not sure that's the most desirable uh, situation to have there. Um, I don't think anybody's going to get extremely hurt if they go running through their backyard and run over this thing, but you know, they might fall over it and fall into the rocks. Um, I, I've said in my communications to you that if the developer wants to do this, that's fine. The wall will have to be built. We'll, we'll minimize it. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't have to do it because right. he's built it according to the plan. And, you know, these folks are here. They, they, they purchased the property with the easement there for the drainage. And 
um, you, know, you know, if they can work it out with the developer, I'm sure the board would, uh, you know, want me to work it out the best we can. Sure. So you understand we approved the plan, you know, <coughs> a while ago, probably before you bought the property. I'm not sure. Yes. But, mm -hmm. And from what Larry's saying, the developer has built this consistently with the plan. So we really can't tell him to do something different. Um, we're really not at that <coughs> stage, but uh, it sounds like if he's willing to make that change, if you actually think that's better. Um, so would you consider this to be a structure? Uh, as it stands now? No. Or, or is it a structure? Uh, in, in, some, in some definitions, yeah, yeah. A, a rip wrap swale, head walls, they are structures. Um, so in, in our, some definitions, not in our easement, we're not allowed to build any structures on our property where this easement is. Well, it, I don't know how the <coughs> rally. I, I think we would have to go to the definition in rally, and I don't know what that is right off the bat as far as structures, unless it refers to a definition by the state. But some um, some bylaws and subdivision rules and regs consider something like that a structure, uh, a riprap swale, a structure, some don't. Okay. That does not sound like the structure that the easement, what they were meaning by a structure is a shed or a Probably. Right. I, I, I would think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Built because zoning yeah. would not call riprap a structure. But is your point that you, you'd like to build uh, a shed or something? No, I, I, so I understood that, you know, um, the land would have to be graded so that water would drain off of our property, which is great. But there's now rocks on about a quarter of this riprap on our lawn, on our property, <coughs> which to me is a little bit confusing because... Well, you're saying it's actually not, right? Or no, it is. It, okay. If you look at that picture... There's a property yeah. line on the structure. Oh, I see what you're yeah. Right yeah. yeah, all right. right yeah, so I'd say, you know, Plus maybe a quarter three. of the riprap, maybe a little bit less, is is on their side of the property line. Right. Uh, but again, it is... it is. Well, you know, it sounds like, oh, you, number one, you have to work this out with the developer and see if he's amenable to changing so it. So I've spoken with him and he, you know, He's willing to work with me, but he said that um, he's just building it to plan. He doesn't want to deviate from his plan without yeah. the approval of the board. Or so, well, if, so. if the board wants to authorize me to work with the developer again, if he wants to, right. then, then we'll, you know, we'll facilitate this change and get as much of the uh, riprap off of your property. If you understand that you're going to end up instead of with perhaps a, a sloped riprap, you might end up with a more vertical riprap or even having to bring in some field stone, you know, on the bottom side of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, 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 it's workable as far as I'm concerned if he's, he, the developer's with it. If, if I could add to, um, when, I, when I spoke with Holly, when she came to the office, you were really interested in, in having a, pl a set plan for the landscaping, right? And that we talked cool. about mm -hmm. um, ha creating a landscape plan on their side of the riprap because there were trees there that were taken down and there will be trees planted, but they kind of want a, a set plan so they know what to expect yeah. and, and to make sure there's adequate screening. That's what I was thinking, that the landscaping that has been proposed and approved on our plan is all on their, on the developer's Correct. side of the land. Right, and, exactly. And, and, Maybe they get better privacy in this negotiation of the riprap, et cetera. If you well, that if you look at the third, on the other side. yeah, look at the last sheet of that, which is why yeah. I brought it in because um, it's a, a bit it's problematic, <laughs> if you will. Space, yeah. um, yeah, it, if, you, if you can imagine that that pink area, um, the, the drainage pipe which crosses the road is exactly on our property line as well. In addition to screening from the development, we assumed the trees on the original approved landscape plan would provide screening for this drainage area, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is now not possible. The, uh, my, my concern about putting trees there, um, and I certainly would say that if there is any agreement 
to putting trees there that the Board of Health should condone it as well is that your leach field, um, if, if we backed all the riprap right up to the property line, it looks like we'd have roughly 11 feet between your nearest leach line mm -hmm. and that wall to put any screening in. Between their leach line? Mm -hmm. Between their leach line, right. yeah, yeah. And my concern would be, what kind of screening can we put in there? Can we, can we put arborvitaes as close to the property line of, as we can toward the developer without the, or, or some type of screening plant like that, without creating perhaps, you know, root intrusion into that, those distribution lines. And I wouldn't want to be a part and party of that. So, you know, I definitely want, you know, the Board of Health to look at it and say, that's okay. If the developer agrees to it, Board of Health looks at it, you accept the responsibility. And if there's, you know, a foul leach line there, it's not, it's not as a result of something, some action that this board took unilaterally you know, to do so. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I think that, Larry, I think your suggestion is, is good to sit with the developer and the neighbors and see if something is possible that makes it better for them and just equally as be yeah. good for the developer. I mean, I mean it, there's a cost in there someplace, but... Is yeah, the, the, the smaller arborvitaes, I mean, we're going to have to put something in there small that's not going to grow too high, very high, that's going to block your seeing the buildings. It might block your seeing the, the riprap swale. But anything that you put there that's going to get any height to it um, <coughs> is going to spread out. Even a, even a spruce or something is going to spread out and go over to those leech lines. So. But so we're taller trees. All of the trees originally. that were there were taken out so that we could grade it. Mm -hmm. The grading changed by, I want to say, five to six inches where these trees came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole reason for those trees to come out was so they could grade what I would assume to have been to a greater extent. But the trees that were removed were very tall, <coughs> although saplings. Yes, but they were... They were there before this new leach field was put in. Yes. Their roots have not did not have a chance to do anything to your leach field. Okay. And if, if you put new trees in there now, you get some dry periods, they're gonna reach out and try to find the water, and the water's gonna be in your leach field. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with doing it. I just right. don't want to do it without the, the board Incorrect. knowing what right. the and the and the and the uh, butter knowing what you know could be an issue here and the board of health signing off on it and everybody saying okay it's not a it's not a unilateral decision by the board to do this mm -hmm. arborvitaes would give a end or a definition to where the prop where mm -hmm. your property ends and where theirs begin and their roots are fairly shallow my recollection is that they are within five feet of my septic system mm -hmm. Would would a fence be considered was, a structure? I was going to say, would some kind of fence? Uh, no, well, it can be considered a structure in some instances. Mm -hmm. Well, but again, isn't that up to the developer? Because yeah, if he wants to, if he says that he he's not bothered by a fence, uh, you know, if he's willing to put it in for you. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. that might be the way to go. That gets rid of the root problem. It's really not a zoning it. issue. It's a, because it's it's an issue of uh, he owns the easement. And under that easement, you can't put structures in there, but he can decide, okay, go ahead and do it. So it mm -hmm. Under the easement, you can build structures as long as they're approved by the planning board. So oh, okay. So well, if it's, I, I think the answer to that is if, if it's okay with the developer, we'd approve it. Okay. All right. right. Why, did, why don't we have Larry, that? the developer, and the neighbors work on a good proposal okay. and I mean, come back to I, us? I think that uh, Steve Mastis has been constantly yes. talking to these folks. Mm -hmm. I think there's an open line of communication. Uh, it's just that we had not gotten before the board to discuss this, gotten direction from the board to me to, you know, to we'll try to work this out and bring it back to you. Well, they seem um, like a great, great <coughs> I mean, If everyone's in agreement and Larry looks at it and says, this is fine, you know, from my recommendation to the planning board is we should, we should approve this. We're, we're going to approve it. There's, there's been a lot of communication between us and, um, Verbally, and I, I just would have liked to have those kind of out in the open with you guys so that 
down the road there doesn't there's not a problem or something that you know we didn't understand or something. Right. So well, I think the time to do this and make these changes is now. Correct. Right. Right, right now, so we can. Um, and and I think you guys, I, I've worked through a lot of developments in, in the 30 plus years I've been doing this. Um, 40 or 50, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are lucky that you have a developer neighbor, as I've seen him to this point because he's been extremely accommodating. Correct. His contractor on the site has done absolutely everything that I've asked him to do, and then some before I ask. And so far, you know, so good. So you guys are fortunate, I think, to have that kind of relationship. So I'll, I'll get together with him. We'll, we'll see what we can, you know, see what he's willing to do. If, if the, is, mm -hmm. Let me just ask you now, is a fence preferred over, you know, a six-foot solid fence preferred over greenery? or? Um, that's something you can t you can call me about and tell me later too. I'm sorry. I, you can think about it and let me know later. But it, it I, I would say that is a preferred option of ours. Yes. The fence place. would be. Yes. So. And it would be a fence that can't be on the property line because there's riprap over the property line, right? Well, it's an issue. if he could move the riprap back and install the fence, I think that's what what okay. I'm thinking about our our, our you know. You know, it depends on how far we, we can put it. <laughs> to me, that yeah. sounds like the way to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, well, I think that's all the kind of issues that had come up. Did you? Now, now, would you like this all summed up in a letter from the board? Um, well, giving you the go ahead? I don't need that. I think I, I can take that verbally. Uh, I'd like the board to, to uh, grant the removal of the trees, the change in the uh, retaining wall with the guardrail and the curb, and you know, have, just to have any of the other abutters been notified of these trees no. being removed? No, no, and I, I, you know, my advice to the board is and, and was that this is a, a minor modification. If if we were going, uh, you know, to be wiping out uh, one or more trees in there of, of a different nature, other than these. And not replacing them, but I think we're getting more back than, you know, than we're yeah, taking out. From the back. I mean, if we got one more, let's say, in our providing in place of the one tall pine tree, we're, we're, we're probably right. ahead rather than breaking even. Yeah. I'm asking for three, three for one. So. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, I, I, well, I think I'll ask for a motion to approve Larry's uh, proposals with respect to the removal of the trees and the cha modifications to the retaining wall. Second. Some move. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, you guys have it. Thank you. And, and to work with, uh, we, yeah. 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 yeah, we'll have a process for that. Yeah. Do you need this thing? Sure. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Because if we, we can work something out where you're happier. And we have a vacancy on the board, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> 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 Okay, Acre Cut Memorial Drive, the certificate of completion. Oh, um, did could we could we skip through because I don't believe anyone is here for that one. Okay. Um, and we do have the A and R that we were trying to get in at eight thirty, but we do have Down River Ice Cream, I believe, here. Hi, Ted. John. How are you? Hi, Cliff. Good to see you. Hi, Jane. Um, no, I haven't. We just have to see this. Okay. Skip through to the A and R. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well. Um, they were before them on the agenda, okay. and so if John Marvin is here, they, they okay. should get the first chance, but if he's not here, we can skip to the email. We haven't seen you for a while. I know. Yeah. I haven't seen you for quite a while. <laughs> Nobody has changed. Well, Everybody looks the same. He is here, so. Those are the, so we're we will, take them first? Yeah, we'll, okay. let, we'll let them go first and say one. If that's okay. Yeah, that's only fair. Good. 
Uh, good evening for the record. My name is John Moran. I work in the Navy Moran Group. Uh, we're here tonight to give the board just an update on the uh, project located at 120 Newburyport Turnpike or Downriver Ice Cream. As the board may recall, uh, Amy Ahern was in here uh, last spring. Amy's here tonight. Uh, for a permit to renovate one of the existing buildings on this property into an ice cream stand. At that time, the board had looked for some modifications to the existing entrance uh, into the property. John, can I uh, ask you a question before you get too deep in this? I understand one of our members has a conflict of interest. If you have nothing to do with the building, no. I don't have a conflict. I have nothing to do with the building. You're the architect for the ice cream stand? Yes. Should I recuse myself? I think so. Are you uh, are you going to need a vote from the board tonight on anything? I think we're just trying to get give the board an update and... You can give us an update, but if you require a vote, we only have three members here, so if you require a vote, uh, I would suggest you may want to come back at some other time, but you can certainly give us an update. And we can give you the, set, our, uh, the two members who can speak to this can give you our sense of how we mm -hmm. feel about it. Well, that's probably what we'll have to do and then return okay. when you have a quorum. Right. We'll probably be looking for a vote, and I'll explain why. Okay. Um, you can stay here. Oh, yeah, I can stay here. <laughs> yeah. So back to the project. We had actually done the, the survey work out on the property. As part of the project, the board had looked for modifications to the existing entrance. Uh, the existing entrance into the development is approximately 50 feet wide. It's a one-way entrance. It's got two accesses coming in. Uh, Larry, your consultant, had some concerns with the regards to that entrance, with regards to the existing parking over at the ice cream, uh, proposed ice cream stand. So there's some proposed modifications to the entrance to try to close it up, make it more consistent with a one-way entrance, 20 feet wide. Uh, vertical curbs uh, to demarcate the entrance coming in. We had filed with Mass DOT in September, received comments back from them late September, responded back to them mid late October, didn't hear anything, called them, called them, called them, called them, called them, got a response February. And they wanted some modifications to the existing entrance. You may recall or some modifications to our proposed changes. They were really strictly increasing the radius on the turn radii coming in on the southerly side of the entrance. <coughs> also, they would not allow us to build that fence out in the right of way, but they would allow us to plant a hedgerow. Uh, you may recall Larry actually submitted um, a letter to the board saying that he was um, okay with substituting the row of hedges for the fence. At that time, we had submitted a revised plan to Mass DOT dated February 7th. Got a response back that plan looked good, put in a letter, get it to us. Very next day, I get a response back saying, nope, we want you to modify the exit now, and we want you to modify the entrance even more. So right now, we're still trying to iron things out with Mass DOT. Now they'd like us to modify the exit, change the entire turning radii coming out, end up losing a parking space. Um, the only modification they really want now to the entrance is change the 20 foot radius to a 30 foot, which we can do, but we haven't submit revised plans yet because we're still trying to work out this whole deal with the exit. I'm not even sure that a, um, the tractor trail would be able to traverse this exit. Also, I don't think my client can give up one parking space. So we're trying to deal with this issue now um, at the 11th hour. What we're here tonight is to get permission from the board to allow uh, Amy to open. We're looking for March 15th. I know as part of the original approval, we had to have uh, these changes performed. However, Mass DOT is not going to author authorize a permit to do part of the work without issuing the whole permit. So we're still trying to iron out this issue, and I just don't know how long that's going to take. 
Could you say that again? Mass DOT is not going to what? They won't issue a permit for partial work. They're going to issue no. a permit for this property, and it's either going to be for everything no. or nothing. And you can't open until they issue a permit? Well, your permit required that we make the changes to the plan okay. before she could open in 2013 or make the changes to the entrance. So we're hoping to get this resolved within the next, you know, few weeks to the month, <coughs> then get the permit. Don't know, you know, it'd probably be a few weeks for them to issue the permit, then get a contractor lined up. So we're still confident that we'll get the work done before her busy time comes, which is going to be June, July, August. But, you know, we don't want to miss the window at the beginning of the season, March, April, May. And that's why we were coming tonight to try to get permission from the board to let her open based on the existing conditions. Uh, we looked into accidents in this area. I think there's been a total of four in the last 10 years. So there doesn't appear to be any major issues with the existing entrance. Um, but that's why we're here tonight to discuss with the board the possibility of getting a permit to open up uh, without having that mass DOT work completed. Um, do you have any comments on this? Uh, yeah, I think what John is, is probably going to get to uh, but hasn't touched on yet is the, the, the board's approval uh, required them to do the modifications which he's been trying to work through with mass DOT. But uh, the, the board's approval also said that if he couldn't get that done or, or couldn't get a permit from Mass Highway to do so, that he could, uh, prior to issues of an occupancy permit, put in some temporary half whiskey barrels around oh, right. that, that curb radius, so if, if you recall that. Mm -hmm. And um, is, isn't that what you also want the board to do tonight, or is that what you think might require a boat uh, minor modification? or? I, I don't know where you're at with that, but it's in there. So I, I don't think I don't think the board has to vote on it. Right. Per se. Yeah, I remember that now. Uh, all that they were required to do was to show good faith in applying to Mass Highway to do what was required on the site plan, and if they couldn't, right, uh, to uh, that they could put these interim planters in um, and get their occupancy permit until they can get Mass Highway. To you know. Now, what about the hedgerow? Could, couldn't you go ahead and do that now? It's in the right of way. Okay. And that's the other issue with regards to those whiskey barrels. Three of them, actually four of them, are actually in the state right away. We can't do those either. Okay. So really, we're back to, I'd move one of them back. You'd be putting in five. And that's kind of what you see in here. I was hoping that we could actually get a permit without doing that. The fact that we're going to be trying to get the permit by early May to do this work just to try to cut down on the costs or try to come up with something else that we could put out there other than these whiskey barrels because they're not they're, they're not that cheap and once we're done with them there really no other place on the property to put them <laughs> so we're going to spend the money for these things we're going to have them for a month and then we're going to have nothing to do with them and just get rid of them so we were looking for the potential of maybe an alternative to those. Uh, instead of putting, uh, actually we were looking for an alternative not to put them in at all and leave the entrance the way it is for the time being. But if we did have to put something in, you know, an alternative to it that would be acceptable to Larry, uh, we could make a proposal and um, use those instead. But again, I don't know if you'd have to vote on it, but the original plan had four of those planters rounding the out into the town the uh, state right away and we wouldn't be able to do those right now no no actually you don't need that because the the approval says that the applicants unable to obtain an mhc approval for the interim planners they shall be relocated to the outside the route one okay. right of way oh. in a location reasonably acceptable to the board so i think you can do exactly like what you want to do <laughs> and and you can do what you want to do and as far as I don't care whether they're real whiskey barrels with the bands, you know, half whiskey barrels with the bands around them. I think you can go to Home Depot and get some pretty gosh darn big, you know, planters for a reasonable price and use them if they're too look, too ugly to use when you're when you're finished with them up and around your your facility there. You haven't spent a whole lot of money. 
I, I don't think the, the objective is to get something big enough and bulky enough out there with a plant in it that people are going to right. drive around it instead of drive it over it. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not. It's not for beautification. It's control. It's now, well, but what about the other issue of the, the fence or the hedgerow? I mean, as I recall, we were concerned about children uh, just running out into Route One and yeah. getting hurt. Um, is there that, something else? That, that, it's something that there. I don't think is as much flexibility in as there is with the uh, with the intersection. Um, it because it says prior prior to reopening the facility, the applicant shall cause. Um, to have the strip of land line between Route 1 and the six space parking area landscaped. Uh, the plan submitted, um, I guess that's part of it. And then the other part, have installed a two, a two rail post and rail fence with green vinyl coated wire attached to the westerly side. And the state says they can't put that there. And so I sent him a letter to the board a month or so ago now that I would be okay eliminate the fence as long as they put a, a, uh, a, a, a plantings in there such as uh, uh, roses or something that nobody's going to run through, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to say, whoops, I'm not going in there. And you keep small kids and, and from going out there. So, but, but I, I don't know if the state's not going to let you do that at this point in time without having the whole thing resolved. I, you can't do something just off there right away? That, no, no, because actually, the pavement's actually yeah. in one spot, the pavement encroaches over yeah, the right they're, away. Yeah, their pavement. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, you know, as an interim measure, it, although it's going to impact on your parking spaces, you could do something on your property, but it's going to take a foot or so out of your parking spaces, which are already short. Right. Well, it sounds like to appro approve that, we need we need a vote to amend the uh, permit. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's pretty, unfortunately, pretty explicit. Yeah, so, and unfortunately, um, and, and, and there wasn't. And so we, that would require a, a quorum, which we yeah. don't have tonight. When's your next meeting? Well, um, we, we haven't called Katrina. One. We haven't set one yet. Being that Dave has to recuse himself, would there be a reasonable assumption there'd be a quorum at that point? Um, would we have it? <laughs> <laughs> Even then, I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't know at this, this time. I, I can't answer that this time. Well, what we'll do is we'll go back to Mass DOT and start trying to push him even harder to try to get that a partial uh, approval for this. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll deal with this at a later time. It's just up to this date they wouldn't do that. Right. Uh, but we'll we'll talk to him and we'll look into the at a minimum, the, the uh, interim um, barrels along the entrance, mm -hmm. which we have the right to do that. Why, uh, why are they uh, asking for the improvement of the exit? Uh, just, just because they have you now? Uh, yes, <laughs> that's exactly, that's one of the reasons. One of their issues is when they first looked at this and it went away, yeah. was the if you extend the property corner out, the exit actually encroaches out in front of the abutting oh. lot. Oh, yeah. They yeah. originally had a, an issue about that, but that all got resolved, and I hadn't heard boo from them since October until two weeks ago, where it all of a sudden all came back again, and they submitted a sketch showing we want this. Can I see the other side? Yeah. What they're, what they're I mean, I don't think it's going to be this drastic. Yeah. I mean, what they're trying to do is you can see exactly what they did is they and, this and curve the return in yeah. so that the extension of that property line can. Right. And I think what's going to happen is you're actually not going to be able to get uh, the traffic. We did a uh, traffic analysis on this mm -hmm. configuration, and you get a pretty good size semi up in there. You're actually more constricted by the existing parking back here than you are than by this. Yep. Yeah. But leaving this site, even with this configuration, yeah. as big as it was. If you're going to make a southbound turn, you're going to be in a northbound lane. Yeah. Yeah, doing yeah. It. yeah and this, is, yeah. this just isn't going to work. So. How about uh, getting uh, the abutter uh, to um, give you a support on on letting that curb run over in front of the extension of the property line? 
Well, we're back into talking to them why they really need that because the abutters access is not even anywhere yeah. near this. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at now. Well, I don't think there's anything the board can do. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, for you there. Uh, no, exactly. That's strictly we're going to be dealing with mass DOT. Yeah. So, yeah, you might want to call Katrina and find yep. out when our next uh, meeting is. We're going to work hard to try and find a new member next month. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, we can't do more. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, Ted. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, Ted Regnante, 401 Inch Water Place in Wakefield. And I represent uh, the applicant uh, who is being with us tonight, uh, Nancy McBride. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, Laura McBride, not Nancy. Uh, her husband Tom is not able to be here. And Peter Kane is the surveyor who prepared the plan. Let me give you a, a brief uh, introduction as to why uh, why the A and R plan is being presented to you. Do you have an extra copy? I do. I, I've been around a long time. <laughs> I used to I used to live here. <laughs> yeah, for, for a few years. We did some pretty good things. Yeah, we did. John Gaines from Hamilton. Oh, Peter King. Yeah, Peter King. Yeah, Dave Jake was. Oh, I live up here. Yeah. So let me tell you what what this is all about. Uh, Laura uh, and her husband Tom want to sell uh, their property, which uh, is on, shown on that plan as 61 Fennel Drive. Uh, you may or may not know it, but uh, the portion of Fennel Drive beyond the public accepted area is private, and there's ongoing litigation uh, no. as to who has. Uh, uh, possibly prescriptive rights right. in the private portion of it. As a result of that, there, you know, this litigation is ongoing. And in order for Laura and Tom to sell the property, what they want to do is split off the lot so that the lot which encompasses the home, which, you'll show, which is shown on your plan as lot one containing 1.76 acres, all of that lot has frontage on Fennel Drive, the public way portion of it. And then uh, the second lot, that is lot number two, which is the 3.89 acres, you'll see up at the top, at the northerly portion, is like a triangular piece with frontage of, uh, well, it's 98.05, 35, and 2342. That portion of that lot two has frontage on the portion of the of of Fenno, which is private. You talk about this triangle, yeah, that triangle right there at the top. Right. So everything in front of here is is, uh, uh, <coughs> is private. The uh, the public for portion ends just prior to that. Could I ask you one question? Sure. How do you know where the private portion starts? Uh, Peter can answer that by, I assume, by the records. I actually... Because I couldn't I, I have, find the answer. Well, I think that's one of the, one of the roots of the it's problem. Yeah. Is it, it, does it date back to the approved subdivision back in, like, 63? I think, I think the, yeah, I think so. Um, there's a new, on this um, earlier subdivision plan that goes actually all the way to... Uh, with Brad and Rasmussen's property line right now that says that the accepted it's accepted as the public way to here based on the town meeting vote. And, and that's what that's, year is this? This is 89, I believe. In 89. Yeah, 89. And that's and, and it, what does this plan say? It's a that, subdivision can it's um the, um, except the, this part here, except yeah, as a public yeah. way to this point, right. 
on March 4, 1963, at the annual Raleigh Town Meeting from Central Street to and including property of Charles B. Hazard III, which is what? Yeah, and, and it also mentions that, um, that other plan, which is, uh, the law was a little confusing because there's there are two plans that, uh, that go with it. Uh, they mention that plan 131-26. It's unfortunately, I have all my hand scratching on it, but um, this is 131.26. And it, um, this point here is the point that they reference right here. And the, the math and everything getting all the way down Federal Drive is the same on, on all the plans um, to get to that point. So they seem to be showing, you know, public way here to the bridge or to that point and private after that and that seems to be in the consistent with the 89 plan as well and that's consistent um, with what i wrote with the lot because i know we have like right. issues of form a um you want to also make reference to this plan no that's <laughs> what <laughs> okay. we did uh you guys just to document the um the improvements within the right-of-way, whether it's private or public. Um, that was done, uh, I think it's part of the, the, the litigation, not, not part of the okay. a &R. Uh, so that, that was just a, you know, part of the, whatever they're arguing about. So in your best judgment as the engineer, this portion of the triangle that we've shown here does not uh, fronts on the uh, private portion. No, it's on the I mean on, on the on public. Yeah, all the frontage on both lots is on the public way, as far as I can tell. And this little piece of frontage over here, I mean, there's 194 feet of frontage for the second lot right now. Minimum is 150. That was just to remove that from the... But this is where the claim is, is yeah, here. Yeah, right. right. Okay. That is where the, that's where the gray area right. is, even though, from my point of view, it seems oh, pretty okay. clear that, it, that, that it's public down to here. Other people are arguing, arguing that it's that it's that it's not the, 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 the and pavement that portion is in the pavement pavement and, and, and the litigation in yeah, that and the litigation. Pavement. So the only way of solving the problem is to get this out of the scenario completely, and that's why the lot line is put there so that it, if they are correct on that, so it's private. It, that it's private, it doesn't impact the, the validity of this lot. This lot, the, the lot that they're trying to sell would have frontage on the public way. So well, uh, this just new lot goes all the way around and right. connects over to here. So right. this is still a good lot over here with this just... Yeah, this, it's this an odd-shaped lot in that it comes right. around here and goes out here, uh, right out to the triangle. But it's still a lot that complies uh, you know, with area and complies with frontage and complies with width. Yeah, it, it was just unbelievably, it complies with the maximum perimeter ratio. Yeah, yeah that shows you how ridiculous that yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this one complies also. Yeah. Right, and this well, one complies because you've got a big area and, and a lot of yeah, you know, long lines. It, it, it's just that small right. area. Right. Well, well, I, I will say that excuse me, that the um, town assessor looked at it. His concern is that we we create unbuildable lots that end up as tax title land, but this one is still buildable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if we ever from a zoning here, point of view, it's buildable. Right. Whether it's from, you know, you've got extensive well, wetlands in there and other issues, but that's well, like, from our point of view. You know, we can't right. say we're not going to prove this because we're creating right. unbuildable lots. Right. We can. And the most right. we can do is, is insist that they be labeled as unbuildable. As to the assessor's point, I mean, right, right now I think it's assessed um, as an unbuildable lot. Right now, isn't it? The uh, yeah. from the tax rate. Fifty-one the, uh, Fennel Drive, I think, is assessed that way right now. Because Why? of the flood. I think they might, from what I understand, from they got a per, they tried to park it years ago so and it failed. So, so I think uh -huh. they maybe filed for an abatement or I don't, you know, a previous owner might have done that. I, I don't really know the, the that's it, it what nice. I sort of heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but yeah, it does. It does <laughs> with this. Yeah. yeah <laughs> this is no <laughs> the reason, the reason we're here, though, is to make this. A saleable lot. In, exactly. And the other thing that we had to do, this was the uh, this is the existing lot line coming down like that. In their septic system, they own both. They owned both lots. They own both lots right now. Um, their new septic system. I don't know when you got it done, but it, it you know it encroaches over the property line right now. So this is going to resolve that problem as well. Mm -hmm. 
I get it all on there. You, you on the, got the, the point. In order to sell this, uh, you know, we need a plan so that but the buyer is, is, is going to buy the, the house and the lot free and clear of the. Uh, but why is that necessary? Because he has enough frontage here. So why would that, right? He has 150 feet of frontage from here to here? 181. 180. So, so why is this would that lot be used to include the, this portion? This is the, uh, the way the lot looks right now. It's with this line right here. All the way over to here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is lot one and, and this is lot two going all the way over here. So we're just... Um, so this piece of disputed road in some way encumbers? Yes. Well, that's what I'm asking. Why is yeah. it? it? It would encumber... I get rid of the encumbrance by writing this lot line down here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's really this an lot which they so that's what I want to, but they, they're not going to sell that. Because it has to do with uh, the derelict fee statue, you know, when you uh, who owns to the middle of the way. And so it, it has to do with from here to here and the rights that are to the middle of the way. Oh. Okay. I did go through the checklist, the A&R checklist, and it does meet all our requirements. Hmm. And they have paid their fee. Well, that's important. <laughs> um, the, Sean said that he does not like to um, sign off on the bottom of that um, as to 61 lands. And he brings it before the Board of Assessors, and they had just met, but he told me it, it, that it's not under 61A. No, none of this thing is. Yeah, it's not big enough. For chapter land? Right, there's a little sign off on oh, the, yeah, the application, yeah. and right. I just it wanted him to look at that, but um, he said it's fine. Any comments, Larry? Are you still looking? Uh, no, I don't see any issues. Um, what, what has been I, um, proposed, I understand why. I actually ended up doing a lot of research on this because um, I was surprised, first of all, that the town clerk couldn't certify if it was a public or private way. We don't have a list of public and private ways in Raleigh. Um, and I was given just a list of old town reports and so started <laughs> researching it. I couldn't find where that portion ended, and um, I came to the realization that that's a good future project for the planning board, possibly, is helping create such a list so that we know which ways are public. Well, maybe we'll get a full-time town planner. Yeah. Do you want this one? I've got an extra copy of it. This is the one Oh, there. sure. I did take the book and page numbers down because I, I didn't find those in my search. Thank so, you. Sure. What do we have to do with this? Oh, we just have to Okay, so take a motion to endorse okay. the A&R. I make a motion that we endorse the A&R. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So, uh, you've got the pen to sign it, okay. What, what, is your, what is your practice to clean? Are we going to take this now yeah. and you make copies of it first or how do you want to work? No, I think what they usually do is sign a paper and hand sign this. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 And then I can always get a copy by putting it on online. Because it, it's not public. Because it doesn't matter to them whether you report it or not. Tina Cassidy over in Beverly back oh. in the 80s and 90s. Oh, so you remember me from oh, Beverly, you were huh? Oh, always before. Wow. So I've been around for probably longer than almost that. anybody that, that, that I know. <laughs> but uh, I still enjoy it. That's what was important. You know, it, it is fun to come, yeah, especially be before boards are like this. Of course. They're, they're good. They know what they're doing. <laughs> don't need all that now, Ted. They've already approved it. Are you sticking your hand? He's got a big project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want that when you are, you, uh, are you retired now from, from the... No, from no. The uh, uh, none of us can so retire. No, it was this year sometime. You are retired this year? Sometime this year. More time for the That's right. We got you. We got you right around May thirty, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Very good. See you very much. Nice to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be a stranger. Nice to see you all again. Thank you. Good job. Good job.
Good, good paper cutter. Yeah, good to see you. Right. Yeah. All right. Guys, more. Yeah, there, there is. There, there are several things more, but we just wanted to get them out of the way because there was representatives. Three sixteen, three twenty, Weathersfield Street. Uh, Turk yes. Drive would be next to you. Right. Um, Turkex Drive. Oh, okay, so Yeah, this was a submission by Hancock, I think, of an as built plan for. Uh, this is Tom. Uh, Tom, Star. Tom Star. Martin, you remember him coming in? Vaguely. They have that first building on the right. Vaguely. And uh, and it, it part of their, which is good. I wish more people did this, but they they prepared a, an as built plan. Oh, really? Of uh, this, this is oh, yeah. this is uh, Route One, as you come in, and then they have their their parking lot in here. Uh, that's that was changed a little bit. We knew that was going to be changed. Uh, I think the uh, original plan had this had some parking in here, uh, and they decided they didn't need it, didn't do it. They're building, of course, they've got a little retaining uh, retention pond out here where some of their drainage comes into. Uh, they did a riprap slope in here down to the toward the wetland. Uh, I, I recommend that you accept this uh, plan, a uh, letter to you dated December 21st, uh, that you uh, accept and approve said plan, so such that it's a paper trail that they've accomplished this in, in their requirements. Can I ask, did, did, um, was it a condition of approval that they, that they supply us with an aspect? Yes, yeah. Is that usual? Yes, in it is. And, and, yeah, it's condition 15 in there. Um, and how come not plan? everyone does it? Uh, don't know because you know because uh, they don't want their technical consultant funds back because yeah that, that's one thing um, we have eight hundred thirty three dollars and fifty cents that I have an expense um, voucher here and if you sign we can send back to Comstar often when it it gets done though when a property turns over and the, and the uh, attorney looks at it and, and says geez there's an outstanding order of conditions here from the planning board or certificate of conditions and You've never submitted an ad bill. What is the slope on that rip rack for? Oh, it's about one to one. It's fairly okay. Okay. forty-five degree. Yeah. What's it made of? It just uh, just cut stone, just just cut stone. Because you can do one to one with earth. You you would have insisted on concrete board. But, uh, no, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so buildings. I recommend you uh, make a motion to accept. This. I make a motion to accept. Second. Turkot Drive. The he has built a plan for Turkot Drive. Right? Yes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Well, um, and, yes, and, and is this, because you're accepting the as built, is this basically your certificate of compliance that they have complied with all the conditions and that they are completely done? Mm, not necessarily. Not really. No, we're accepting the plan. Are there things I, mean, left? Does, I don't think there is anything left. It doesn't look except doesn't landscaping, I wouldn't think, but. Uh, which one is the G2? Well, I guess uh, the question is then when do you know when something is totally complete so that we can get back the technical consultant? Is there some left in that account? There is $833.50. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, would you recommend that we give that back? Uh, not without going through, you know, you know, back through each and every one. I just looked at this one condition. Um, usually that's prompted by them asking. <laughs> I, I thought their letter did request that did the, this would this would um or is that the other one I'm thinking of? I mean, oh, maybe it did. Um, uh, you I know, I'm eager to start giving money back because I do have to get all the accounts in order. Um, and this is Turcotte and attachment C. No, they just say um, on behalf of their client. This is Hancock talking. Richard Martin hereby submitting closed as built um, plan of the completed project. Uh, this is pursuant to condition 15. Last evening, the Rally Conservation Commission approved the issuance of a certificate of compliance signifying completion. So they're implying completion in that letter. So yeah, per perhaps you should be reviewing. Should they be reviewing? Well, is there much to review? I mean, no, I, I just probably go back through the whole thing and and be sure that all the conditions, uh, mm -hmm. other conditions are met. I, I think for the most part, I could say right now, I'm not percent sure it is. So. But I'll look at it again. Okay. If, I mean, if you want, it's sort of you're sort of proactively moving this thing forward because I don't think they really ask for that. But 
Well, there's nothing wrong with doing no. that. No. It's just very satisfying to be able to close the Wipe file it out. and say, yep. yeah, yep. all right, yep. we're done with it. I can put it in the file cabinet. I know, I know what you're um, getting at. And that's so good. we will not release the funds. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll, I'll take another spot at it and make recommendations. What's next? Okay, 316, 320, Willis Street, common driveway, and special permit. Is this um, right out in the corner of Route 1? Uh, this is the uh, three lots on the left as you come in for Route 1. Right. That they already built the drive and all that's done, uh, except they didn't, uh, they haven't started any of the houses in there. <clears throat> and prior to them getting a building permit, they were required to, um, one of the conditions, Prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant or a successor in the signs, buyer and or builder of each lot shall submit to the planning board a design and plan for the roof infiltration facility for each of the three dwellings. So um, Meridian had submitted to me back, uh, probably back in December or so, a, I'll call it a design, at least a submittal, which I did not accept uh, because it wasn't specific enough. And they resubmitted uh, three plans, one for each of the three lots in January with calculations uh, in support of the roof infiltration facility for each one of those. And I, I reviewed it, it's okay, um, and I'll send the board a letter recommending that you accept that submission in, um, as um, and that's the last step before building permits. Yeah, as, as compliance with conditions. So okay, sounds good. So I'll, I'll send you a letter in that regard. I just, I, I didn't have a chance to look at it until late okay. today. So is that it for the... Yeah, the, the yeah I don't think you need to uh, take any action on that tonight unless you want to take action on it tonight subject to receipt of a letter from me to the board. So you could do that. I do know that, I don't know if you heard, but he has since found out that... that he is subject to the stormwater uh, oh, bylaw, okay. no, I so I think he's going to have to go through that process. Okay. Um, these were all permitted before we adopted the stormwater, but that's a general bylaw, not mm -hmm. zoning, and so nothing was frozen or grandfathered. Okay. And, um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll about that. Table, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I think that's going to stop him for a while. I'm okay, sure. um, I'm moving on. That's, that's good, I'll, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend this because that satisfies our condition, sure. as far as I'm concerned, even though it may not satisfy sure. the stormwater. Right. Sure. Right. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. um, residences at Rowley Country Club, Ralph to George. I'm sorry. So you wanted to table that till yeah. next month? Yes. Okay. Is Ralph around? No. Uh, I'm sorry. Jill um emailed, oh, okay. and they they would like to come back next month. Ralph is going to be calling Larry if he hasn't already. He um, hasn't. He, he emailed me and asked so for my cell phone number, but I. I emailed him again yeah. all the addresses because I've already given him. What is the issue for, for the folks at home? He, I just <coughs> want to make sure that he does nothing out there that he doesn't approve of because now that they're tabling this a month, we still don't have consultant funds for him. Oh, okay. And so we don't want him doing anything that needs Consult. Larry reviewing oh. until we get those funds. Generally in a month's time, and particularly this time of year, I don't think they can go that fast. They, they, they're required to put up some signage first um, and work that out with the highway department and the police department. I don't know that that's been done. Um, they've got, you know, they've got to get, engineers got to get in there and stake layout for the road. Generally the first thing they do is clear, if they're going to work on the subdivision rather than on the buildings perhaps, you know, stake the road and they go in and remove the topsoil, top, they stockpile the topsoil, get rid of some of the subsoil so they start working on the base. I mean, they've probably got a <coughs> they've probably got some, you know a couple weeks of work there. They've cut down a lot of trees. That's somebody told me that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. On the property, back yeah. on the property. Yeah, it's not surprising. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I speak to Ralph, I'm I'm just going to tell him that, uh, you know, the, he he's had a uh, issue with the the fees and he hasn't paid any. Oh, okay. And I will inform him as to what I will inspect as a general rule 
and way of doing business with the board, and he's going to be subject to paying those fees, even though he hasn't agreed to, at least up to that point. Because <laughs> if he wants to move forward, what, what small fees I'm going to have certainly shouldn't stop him. He shouldn't balk at. I um, was upset at a lot of the water department fees. Yes, yeah, I was. Well, yeah, you construction, the construction. Larry and I did the construction, pre construction with Katrina. Yeah, 36 units at $3,000 each, right? Wow. $108,000 of fees mm -hmm. for the individual hookup fees. And that's not for construction, that's just. No, that's just hookup fees. So. Uh, Everybody well, pays. And you wondered why we couldn't keep paint on the building with those kind of fees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the, um, I, yeah, I not did, the water department. Did, did everyone see the uh, letter for the conservation restriction being submitted to the state? No, oh yeah, I did see that, yeah. So did that. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, okay, um, Down River Ice Cream, I think you did that? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Shana States, I hate to bring this one up. Um, I, I still have not received town council opinion on this, uh, which I'm waiting for, and she said not to do anything until... Oh, well, that's easy then. Yeah. Okay. I move that we postpone this. Uh, second. Second. Passed over one. Um, is that it? Um, correspondence, if anything, anyone wants to talk about anything, because um, I... Let me just uh, look through... We really don't want it. I'm hoping people do go through the correspondence because um, there is yeah, some do do. important things that. Um, did it get emailed to me? Then I'll go through. But, um, um, why don't we do the minutes? But there's really nothing. Okay. Yeah, let's um, do the minutes. Uh, January 15 and December 19. I've got some changes. Um, uh, well, I guess we'll do the 19th first. Does everyone have that? No. 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 Um, the paragraph that starts off, Pierce offers, mm -hmm. this is just a minor thing. In the last sentence of that paragraph, uh, board agrees to delete reference to inserting language on, on the ANR. Mm -hmm. um, should we just say board agrees to delete language on the ANR? Cross out reference to insert it. Okay. okay. Yeah, did you just reference twice? Yeah. Um, and the under uh, number three, the cell tower, I don't think this is in here. I think we should just add uh, the statement that uh, the, these modifications will not increase the height of the tower. That's really the most important issue, I would say. Yep. Uh, anyone else have a Okay. I didn't see anything else. Okay. Um, and then we can vote on both of these, both of these at the same time. Um, on uh, January 15, mm -hmm. um, the board thanks Attorney Mann for her efforts in regards to this project. I mean, I don't think we need to put that in there. Where is that? <laughs> yeah. The board thanks Attorney Mann for her efforts in regards to this project. Is it project. first paragraph? Or? It's, uh, it's the end of, uh, it's one sentence by itself, right above uh, paragraph oh, D. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, she, she's deserving of her thanks, but I don't think we need to put it in there. Oh, okay. Um, uh, at the bottom line, uh, the sentence that starts, Larry Graham did, is just a typo. It's take out the R in front of mention. Oh, yes. Okay. And similarly, um, the discussion on the Rowley Village Green Development being named Heritage Way. Um, in the last sentence of that paragraph, mm -hmm. I think you need to include a not. So it should read, it should not be much of a problem. And let's see, um, the last sentence. The last sentence of. Okay. Do you see that? It should not be, be much. It should not be. No. Okay. Okay, anyone else? No. No. I make a motion. Someone make a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve. December 19th and January 15th. <laughs> adds note and the corrections as right. noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Okay. Thank you, We're done. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>